Hi, and welcome to today's presentation on what couples with ADHD are doing in their homes for maximum success. We want to talk to you specifically about what couples are doing in their homes that have ADHD, whether their kids have ADHD or one of their par spouses, one of their spouses, their spouse has ADHD because it is so frustrating to live with ADHD for both people. If you are the one with ADHD, no doubt you feel maybe like a failure, maybe like you could do better. You're getting a lot of criticism. You're feeling like you're just not doing a good job, maybe as a dad, as a mom, as a wife, as a husband. And it's really, it's really depressing sometimes because it's this handicap almost that holds you back and you know you can perform because you are great at doing some things, maybe work or some kind of creative outlet you're awesome at. But when it comes to certain things in the home, it's very unpleasing to your partner and you're not maybe even sure why. Or if you are the one that doesn't have ADHD, you're the non-ADHD spouse, you feel like you're the only adult in the room. You want to have a partner. You want to have someone you can rely on, but you can't because you know your husband or wife's brain just doesn't work the same way yours does. You're not quite sure why, but you know that it doesn't. And sure, you can you know, have compassion for that, but at some point, it, you're, you've reached your limit and you want to be able to rely on them and you can't. So these are the problems that you're facing in this relationship amongst others. Like, you know, you have to take the kids to all of their appointments. Chances are they might have ADHD or, or ADD. So you're always looking for maybe a new natural supplement so you don't have to medicate them or you have decided to medicate them and maybe you need to up their dose or you need to tweak the dose you know, and maybe you're doing behavioral therapy or allergy elimination techniques or biofeedback, all kinds of things you're doing because you want to, you want to help them. Of course you want to help them, but you also maybe want to fix the problem and ease some of their symptoms. Um, and so what happens is then your relationship with your spouse is kind of on the back burner because, you know, the kids are the squeaky wheel that gets the grease. They are, the ones who are receiving the most of the attention now because they are the ones that have the most needs. So your relationship goes on the back burner and that puts a damper on things because you're not actively working on your marriage. So then it's kind of just, right, it's just kind of passive. And so you're not able to give it the attention that it needs. And, and we know what happens when, when that is the case is, um, you know, little cracks show up in the foundation and you know, at first there may be tiny little cracks, but then over time they can wear into a big crack um, and make it so much harder to fix. So that's what we're seeing with a lot of couples in our practice, our marriage counseling practice, amongst other issues. So I forgot to mention the other things that show up bet between the two of you, maybe when you are trying to work on things, and that is your spouse has a lot of anger. There's a lot of unpredictability. Impulse control challenges. Yeah. Impulsivity. And that can wear you down. It can be embarrassing to be with other people. It can cause a lot of debt maybe to be incurred with, you know, spontaneous purchases that are r rather large, um, you know, negatively impacting your, your financial situation. So all of these are issues that couples where one where both spouses have ADD or ADHD, or even just the kids have it, but it impacts you as the parents. And we'd like to share with you what will work for you to help you with these issues. And before we do, we wanna just share a little bit of our story. So when we were first married, um, we were experiencing challenges and it got to the point when our first child was born that we really needed to get, or I felt we needed to get help. So I dragged Rifka to Imago therapy. Along. ADHD spouse. Yeah. <laughs> and I was in school at the time studying to be a therapist. And we were, we had a really great experience. It really helped us. A lot of the issues that we had were able to be dealt with. And we were able to see a new way forward and understand the relationship conflict that we experienced. And it was really a wonderful experience. And we continued to use those tools throughout our relationship. And of course, as I began to do this work professionally i am i was involved with this on a daily basis with the couples i work with and we're married 19 years now so we've had a long time to experiment when we first got help it was about what a year or two into our marriage yeah two years so 
then one thing that I started noticing over the time, even though I felt like I was definitely committed to the relationship, I understood why we were experiencing the general conflict. So I had the commitment, I was all in, that wasn't a question anymore. But there were still things that even though we had our, the, the skills that we learned, there's still things that would bother me. And of course I was more patient, more compassionate, but it also, as Rivka said, it kind of got to the point where I'm just like, enough is enough. Like, this is really not fair. And I started, re when I started reading about ADHD and the ADHD marriage, and then also noticing with my couples, I started realizing this is probably the, you know, the linchpin here. This is probably the real underlying issue that's getting in the way. And if we could work on that, that could make all the difference. That's when I realized that our brains work differently. The things that I think are so, so simple that can be done, you know, the follow through, uh, the impulse control, those are some of the things that, of course, for me, it's very easy to do. But I just don't understand why can't you do that? Is it because you don't care about me? Is it because um, I'm not important? Because I can see that you can focus and do thing, other things. And that becomes a frustration and the resentment and the feeling that I don't matter and I'm not important. So this is what we felt in our relationship. And then as I started seeing this more and more with my couples, I started seeing a theme that as we're still dealing with all the things that we typically do with a couple in, in the counseling office, there's this other layer that's getting in the way and preventing couples from reaching true success. Yeah, let's, let's talk a little bit about that. Um, and this is a short video, so we'll just touch on some of the, the ideas here. And if you want more information or you want to talk to Shlomo, we have a button below where you can schedule a time to speak to him so he can help give you some clarity about your unique situation because every marriage is different, even an ADHD marriage. Um, but you talked a little bit about the brain Shlomo. And you know, a lot of you out there know that your brains are different, but you might not have known how they're similar. And that's gonna lead us to the one secret that really makes a huge difference. So let's talk about something called the triune brain. So the triune brain is a model that breaks the brain into three parts. We have the more, I would say, the older part of your brain, meaning the part that develops first, um, the more primitive part of your brain that kind of keeps you alive. Um, we call the brain stem. That's what really regulates your breathing and just keeps you surviving. That's right here at the base. The right? base. And then you have your middle brain. You have your limbic system, the emotional brain. And then you have the cognitive brain. That's the more part of higher thinking. That's where it kind of separates us from uh, man from beast. Now, ideally, we want to be integrated with our whole brain so that we can access all of our cognitive faculties and be able to think and be able to self-regulate. That's how we want an ideal state. But the challenge is when we're not feeling safe, when we're feeling threatened, we're going to go into that very primitive part of our brain, and we're going to be focused on one thing and one thing alone, and that is survival. And the problem is when you're focused on survival, you can't see beyond yourself. The only thing you can focus on is yourself and your needs. So you can't think, well, you know, how is this going to impact my relationship? If I'm upset right now, I'm, gonna, I'm yelling at you. I don't think like, well, is this going to actually hurt your feelings? Maybe I shouldn't say that. If you're so far gone and so far reactive, you're not going to be able to get to that place where you can actually make choices that are mutually beneficial for your relationship. And you're just going to worry about surviving yourself. So one of the things that we teach couples is how to be able to self-regulate, how to be able to calm yourself down so that you can actually choose how to respond. Instead of reacting, which oftentimes, especially in a, you know, a neuro, neuro uh, atypical spouse can lead to a lot of damage in a relationship. If you're able to learn how to calm yourself down, to self-regulate, to express yourself in a way that the other person can hear you, in a way where you're not blaming or shaming the person, but you're really setting up in a safe way, then your relationship can improve and get to the next level. But if you're just responding and reacting out of impulse and out of hurt, then you're going to do a lot of damage. And that is huge. That, I hope you guys wrote that down because that really is the secret that we wanted to share with you today. It's all about being a safe enough partner for your spouse and, and communicating and showing up for them in a way that's no shame and no blame, right? So that puts them at ease. So that makes them more able to hear you. So that makes them more open to following through despite their challenges with follow through and accountability, right? Because then it puts them at ease and they're not in that fight or flight impulsive part of the brain, but they can access their full brain and actually come up with the solutions that they're great at coming up with and actually, you know, completing them. So it's all about creating that calm and creating that connection 
And when we do that, we can, all the symptoms that we are associated with, attention deficit disorder, ADHD, can be, can be calmed down, can be regulated. And then you're gonna feel better about yourself too. Because it doesn't feel good to just feel like, I don't know, I just, I'm upset, so I'm just gonna explode. And I almost feel like I have no self-control and that can bring a lot of shame for a person. But to really feel like I can self-regulate, I can actually have some type of self-control, I can do it, and I have tools that can actually help me do it, tangible tools, not just you know, go over there and just you know, try to concentrate for a few minutes, but really tangible tools, step-by-step, step, something that you can do in the moment to calm yourself down and to be able to respond in a different way. Yeah, it's really remarkable. And many of our colleagues are using this same process with their couples and the people that they see that have these, you know, same kind of challenges with ADD and ADHD. And it's wildly successful. I can also speak from my perspective as the one with ADHD that when I can show up in this way for Shlomo and when he can show up for me um, and I can calm my impulsivity and anger down, a light bulb goes off. Whereas right. before it was dim. And you can communicate too, because a lot of times, you know, I remember when we first did this and I remember you were asking, well, you know, I have ADHD. How am I going to be able to really listen to him? Because one of the complaints is, well, you don't listen to me. You can't sit for more than two seconds to hear me. But it's amazing. This process actually helps you, even someone who has ADHD, be able to calm their brain down enough to be able to actually listen to your spouse, which is a, a huge thing for the non-ADHD spouse to really feel heard and understood. Be able to sit there for you know more than more than a minute and really intently hear and remember what they're saying and really understand where they're coming from. And that's a huge thing. Just to be able to do that alone is a creates a major shift and brings back a lot of hope for the, the relationship. Absolutely, it absolutely does. And we'd love to share more of this with you. We're so passionate about it. It helps us many years ago and it continues to help us through daily challenges. And we're very excited to share with you. So just click on the button below, schedule a time to speak to Shlomo. You will speak with him directly and book a time, no charge, no strings attached, just free advice and some clarity so you can get a little bit of hope and perspective. Thanks for watching. Take care. Take care.